Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been pondering our situation with the Maya space plane, and some people suggested that I should increase the heat tolerance on it, but really, the heat tolerance is the same on the Mark III cockpit and basically everything else they've got here. And that's because the internal temp is set to this instrumentation setting, it's a tag, and basically anything that has people in, or avionics, is going to have uh, internal max temp of 448 Kelvin and then it has a skin max temp of uh, 2273 and that's based on RCC so yeah basically everything has that so I don't feel since they're very very determined on this point uh, I don't feel like I can change that about the Maya space plane which is after all all the way down here as well and was quite cheap uh, but I did make a mistake on the Maya space plane and that's that while I had changed that for the crew cabin, I hadn't apparently changed that for the liquid fuel and fuselage, the liquid fuel fuselage and the back end, the engine mount. So what they originally had before was 1000 internal temp and 2200 Kelvin skin temp, and that was matching the Mark I parts. However, these are not the only numbers involved. There are also conductivity numbers and emissivity numbers and so they might have been conducting heat to the cabin and the engines. And while they themselves were not uh, having a problem with that, because they had an internal max temp of 1000 Kelvin, they caused problems for the engines and the cabin because those had lower internal temp maxes. And maybe that's what was going on. So... I've adjusted that. I've made sure that they're also in this new sort of format with the tags and everything. And we will see if that works out for us without crew, of course. But I've uh, contemplated some other changes. And uh, we have one be being built with the Deneb 4 and a uh, Deneb A4. But uh, basically, I've realized that we can use a smaller launcher. So this is the Arcturus Very Light. And. Uh, well, there are upsides and downsides to this situation. Uh, the upside is it is cheaper, and it is using the Vulcan 1 down here, and we're using the Vikings as boosters on these small boosters here, and these tanks are all already tooled. Uh, not that I have to worry about that, I've got nearly a million unlock credit. Uh, but also that our thrust to weight ratio is very moderate, so we don't have to worry about turning off engines or anything like that. And once the boosters are gone, we have pretty good thrust weight ratio. It fits on the 180 ton pad, ELA-4. Uh, though we could make it somewhat larger if we wanted to make ELA-4 larger, and we probably should. We do have to turn ELA-4 into a human-rated launch complex, though. Now, there are downsides to this. Uh, the first downside is we don't have as many people on ELA-4 as on the other launch pads, so it actually takes longer to integrate it, even though it's cheaper. And that's annoying. And we also have to upgrade the propellant GSC. Oh, and apparently uh, there's a little bit of a length issue and height issue. Uh, well, we, could, we should just upgrade the pad. So uh, let's upgrade the pad and try to extend it a little bit. We probably don't need it to be uh, hun uh, 135 to 180. We can probably do 150 to 200 and that'll be best. And why don't we just go ahead and uh, the, the length limit, I guess that's to suit this rocket, so might as well make the width limit the same and it'll have to be human rated. So it's got a cost of it to renovate it. Um, it's not that much cheaper than the other version because the space plane is its own cost. We were only making the launcher cheaper. The space plane is very expensive. Yeah, well, we'll try to renovate it. All our pads will be human rated. That's probably a good thing. Maybe. Maybe not, actually. But uh, we'll be getting our hydrogen and oxygen. That's very important. Okay, renovate. Okay, so that's uh, Arturus very light. But we'll have to wait for that renovation. So that's why we are not changing the one that's currently being built for the other pad. The main job for today is to retest the Maya space plane with the adjustments and then also take care of this Jupiter orbiter that is arriving and make sure we do that 
particular contract so that we get the confidence points. Okay, so here we are on the pad, no Kerbals, all safe. I mean, as safe as it can be. So we have lost some money in the interim, and we are now at 700,000. Hopefully this particular program will pick up in, in earnings, but maybe not for a while. So SAS is on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. One suggestion was that we put some extra water up front to cool things down, but that's not the ideal solution, obviously. By the way, if we had actually used a larger Arcturus, just the Arcturus Light, for instance, that would have enough delta V to send the space plane to the moon on a flyby. Of course, coming back would be a problem. The full Arcturus might be able to help it do a full mission, really, in theory. Okay, booster set. On this version of the space plane, the engines have been moved up a little bit. In fact, the controller is now clipping the top of the fuselage, which is a little bit sad, but... Hopefully that'll be safer. Oh, we're a little bit high. Too much thrust here still. Okay, well, we've ended up a little bit lopsided, so I'll correct that. But that's, again, because of the high thrust-to-weight ratio of this particular launcher, and uh, we'll be fixing that potentially with the Arcturus VL. So uh, let us get down to periapsis, and then... Well, I mean, I think we'll just go for a one-surround thing. Also, one orbit. And especially since the Space Center is going to be in the dark soon. As far as whether the engines are better balanced, it seems like it's not using very much pitch, so they are better. Oop, I probably did way too much. Ah, I did way too much. Well, the apoapsis would be about right, but it's in the wrong location. I think we'll actually try to wait a day. Well, that one and a half hour orbit's good enough for me, so the RCS is puffing way too much. Okay, so can we hang out for a day here? Seems good enough. It does recharge. We don't need to. The inclination is so small that uh, we're basically in line with Kuru all the time. It's more with uh, higher inclination landing sites that we have to worry about waiting for a whole day. Okay, well, we'll just use the Hydrolock system to do Retro Burn. This might be early. And we do want to go more severe than last time. Last time, we spent too much time accumulating heat, and that was not good. Or should we just go decisive and go 40? Maybe 40. That could be bad though. We'll see. I think I did this earlier than last time, which is bad. Potentially. And we won't worry about the engine. Definitely won't worry about the engine. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Well, we're needing to pitch up again, that's not a surprise, so I'm gonna move this back. Probably won't be too bad judging from last time though. Uh, well, one of the engines is overheating. <laughs> but also the cockpit's overheating again. We should be going up soon, which could help. But you know, if there's a Kerbal inside, it'll overheat twice as much. And just gotta hold this 40 degree pitch as much as possible. As we slowed down, it seemed like the engine could take a higher pitch. So if it can take 40 degrees now, that's probably good. Uh, the wings, though. <laughs> 
I was hoping that uh, if we have the body have the same heat conductivity and emissiveness, that that would also solve the wing overheating problem. Guess not. I guess that is not the case. Though the front end cooled down faster than before, I think. So I think overall it's going better. Whether we're actually going to get to land is a whole other business, though. I think we did the retro burn too early for this situation. But we'll see where we end up and work from there. The Arturus VL actually provides more Delta V than the Deneb A4 for this, so we'll have more Delta V to work with in orbit. I don't think we'll need too much more, but it's good to know. We're going back down again, so the wings have stayed hot. Which is unfortunate. Well, 70 kilometers and we're going back up again. The engine is, well, it's how it is there. The front end is not overheating. Uh, I don't, I think we're gonna end up in the water though. 53 degrees west or thereabouts is where we want to be. 91 is where we are, so. We'll see where we end up, and then we'll adjust the retroburn location accordingly. I mean, I did pretty good last time, but we were also not holding 40 degree pitch all the way, which we are now. Now, do we trust this? I mean, is this, go is this okay? Can we put a Kerbal in if it survives this time? These are very difficult questions. Oh, the cabin's overheating now, though. Now, when we're half of orbital speed, or less, it decides it's accumulated enough heat to bother me. Great. Uh, it's still overheating even more. <laughs> I mean, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Uh... Okay, now the back end is also overheating. Shouldn't they decide to overheat earlier? I mean, really? And what, at what point does the nice cool atmosphere cool them off? No, nope, I don't want to increase Mach number, so... I want to go down, but not increase Mach number. Location-wise, we're close to land, but still too far away. But we're going up right now, so there's that. Yep, yeah, selling the fuel down does not seem to work very well right now. The overheating is now tinting the front end of this. It is all very worrisome. Land is so close yet so far. Especially since I can't give myself a boost right now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Oh, engines are settled now. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I should have probably just gone to atmospheric autopilot now. Ah, uh, one engine is out. That's fine. Well, in theory, we don't need the RCS propellant either. Land. It's right there. Can't really, really see it. Can't tell what it is. I mean, I see some hills out there, but... It's tough. Well, it's certainly trying. Uh, we probably could do with a little bit more speed and less height, I guess. 
It's certainly trying. It's got to be close. Aerodynamically, it's just, you know, the B9 procedural wings. And the body has been configured the same as the Mark I stuff. So, no shenanigans. Still not really cooling off at all. Everything else is fine. <laughs> it, it's just the, just the front. The canards are fine. The canards are pretty far up, aren't they? They're fine. But then again, they don't have Kerbals on board, so they don't have extra low heat tolerance, right? Remember, this this part has 448 max internal temp. That's not true of the canards. Okay, well, I see land there. Columbia, here we come. Okay, well, that took a while. But we seem to have made it to the coast. I'll expedite at this point. Get below the clouds. It's cooled off a little bit, but definitely not all the way. So that's about as long as we can take through re-entry. If we take any longer, it's gonna blow up. Negative 40. I guess we can go with 42, the answer to everything, I suppose. Question is, so is this safe for a Kerbal now? Do we think this is safe? This is a very difficult question, isn't it? Okay, landing gear. Now there's extra overheating, what? The front landing gear is overheating. <laughs> Get it. I think that's mighty suspicious. Well, that's as gentle as I can make it. Okay. Okay, we're in one piece, but... So, like... If we deploy the landing gear, I mean, I guess it's the same heat as the body, but I'm wondering if when we deploy the front landing gear, whether it might explode on us all on its own. Anyway, let's recover vessel. Normal recovery. So I guess we'll launch a Kerbal next time. How's that? Well, the construction is half done. We've got the rest of our Kerbinauts training up for the proto-space plane. We have our new launch pad. Let us get the new version of the Maya space plane on the Arcturus VL onto that launch pad. We will build a few. Advanced nose cone. I could have sworn we'd unlocked those before on the boosters, but okay. Sometimes. Alright, we've got that on the integration list, and we need to pe send people over. The maximum number of people we can. It's still gonna take a bit. Maybe not as bad as was advertised, though. It's just 76 days. We're still losing funds overall, though. Maybe I don't need 2,400 engineers. I've got a lot of unassigned engineers. Let's just... Get it so that we're nice and balanced at this point. Let's say 1,800. I mean, we're still losing money, but I guess we can weather that until we get the next contract pack. Alright, so let's go ahead and we are going to focus on the Jewel 4, arriving at Jupiter. Well, it's just an SOI change, so we're just going to take a look at it and we're probably going to launch the Maya B again, this time with crew. I don't think we have any corrections to make. There are a bunch of things going on here. We've got a Ganymede encounter, and then we get close to Jewel, uh, Jupiter. Whoops. Okay, well, it just wants an apoapsis below that, which is pretty easy. The Ganymede thing will just be a bonus as long as we don't crash into it. 
having a heck of a time calculating things right now, apparently. Can't forget if we visited Callisto, so we might want to try that. Uh, but yeah, we'll set our alarm for the SOI change into Ganymede space and give ourselves an hour before that. Okay, so that'll be the next time we pay attention to this in 84 days. It seems to be doing well, and it's starting to do science in orbit around Jupiter. And those will take a while, that's what this is for, all the long duration science. And it might even be, well it depends, some of them are bio, surface biome dependent, but uh, it might be done with the 90 day ones by the time, well not by the time we capture, but it will have done a chunk. Anyway, back to Space Center. Who's going to retire first? Barbell. Okay, well, Barbell gets to start training first. Uh, completes in at November 28th, though, so a little bit late. But the next one won't be ready until January anyway, so we won't train anybody else just yet. Oh, well, we have to pay attention to the Jewel Probe again. Oh, Jupiter Probe. It is now going to be approaching Ganymede. And we'll probably finish up its business before launching the Maya space plane again. Well, there's Jupiter. Ganymede should be fast approaching. There's Ganymede. And we are doing Ganymede science very, very, very briefly. Retroburn location looks like a good place as far as comms are concerned. A little bit high, but that gives us a nicer view of Jupiter, I guess. The previous time we were really close in. Well, we're at low over Jupiter, I guess. Now it's got different... A different set of stuff running. It just started on these. Hopefully we got a good chunk of the rest of the stuff. Okay. And ignition. Okay, next stage. Okay, that's good enough for the contract. So, just verifying that it's stable. Okay. Now, it's in plane with all the moons, which is dangerous because they can do bad things to it. Uh, the easiest one to potentially get into orbit around would be Callisto, but that's going to cost a lot. So we can only do flybys. And we saw a couple there. I mean, Callisto could help with its gravity and everything, but... Or, you know, like... So the using the moons to help out is not as good with Jupiter as it is with Jewel because the gap between Jupiter's size and the size of its moons is much greater. I, I do want this little Callisto periapsis maybe. But that's 3000 so we can't. Oh, uh, we'll just get this IO flyby. I'll take that, I'll say that's close enough. Well, I think it was touchier than I was expecting. Because it's not showing me any encounter with Io. Uh, well, looks like we were off. I don't know, when was the encounter supposed to be then? <laughs> uh, well, the period's only two days. It said after 18 days or something that we'd have an encounter. So it wasn't on one orbit, it was on a lot of orbits. Uh, because of that, I can't see when it's going to happen or how to fine tune it. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't see it happening right now. No, uh, well, I can't find that IO encounter again. <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe we'll just leave this be. Alright, unfortunately no IO encounter this time. Fortunately still doing science. And of course the contract is fulfilled. 
As far as our confidence, we need about 8,000, oh, sorry, 860 more in order to be able to do the Earth space station at FAST. So let's go to Space Center and see if we've got something that will give us that 860. Now there's an optional Jupiter orbital science probe. I, we just did that. I guess it's a repeat? Archives. Let me see. We did do that, right? Oh yeah, orbital science probe. There's a repeat Jupiter orbital science probe. We're not getting any money for from that contract thing anymore, though. This is an IO fly. Well, that doesn't give any confidence anyway. This will give enough, but it'll take many, many years to do it. So that's not great. As far as our existing crewed space plane development, mm -hmm. this suborbital space plane flight which I took, I took because it would give a little bit of confidence. These others, I don't know about. They don't say whether they're going to give confidence ahead of time. It doesn't look like it, so I don't know about that. I don't know where the other sources of confidence might be before we get to the Earth space station one. None of them tell me how much confidence they're going to boost us by ahead of time. The asteroid exploration is something we can unlock right now, but again, I can't see ahead of time where the confidence might be. One would hope that it would give us a boost of confidence to get into orbit around Ceres or Vesta, but there's no guarantee for that. Okay, so... We are going to wait until our training for Barbell Herman is complete. Herman, almost Kerman. And I guess it's just going to... I have to make it a suspense thing. Will Barbell survive? We'll find out in the next episode. So, Barbell is ready to go. Uh, okay, stop, stop time warp. Oh, I have to... See, if, if that little message is there, it doesn't let me stop time warp weird. Anyway, so all right, I'm going to launch, but you'll find out what happens in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.